Welcome to our third and final segment of this lesson and to the final video of this lesson series. We're going to complete our second outline, Lord's Coming, Malachi the third chapter, the first through the fifth verses, and the fourth chapter and the first verse. We ended our last segment. All I did was just read the fifth verse. So I'm going to read it again and break it down for you. Malachi 3, 5. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swears, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. So again, this is more of the same what we've been hearing in our previous lessons. He's going to judge, he's going to come against the sorcerers, those who are doing evil, those who are thinking evil, and trying to work evil work against others. Amen. He's going to be a swift witness against the adulterers, those who are unfaithful in their marriages, unfaithful to their families. He's going to be a swift witness against the false swears, those who are lying, those who are being deceitful. Amen. He's going to be a swift witness against those that oppress the hireling in his wages. And what that means, that phrase, uh, oppress the hireling in his wages, that means not paying people their fair wages. Oh, hallelujah, we find that in our world today. We find that especially in America, where various corporations are oppressing their workers. They're not paying their workers what they are due. They're not giving them fair wages. They're not giving them a, a fair minimum wage or a living wage. Many people work, but they don't make enough to live. And it's not just because they don't have a good budget or they're wasting their money. We know people do that. But there's some people... They could save as much as they can't save because they, they make so little in the city that they live in. By the time they just pay their rent and pay their bills and buy food, they don't have anything left. So they're being oppressed in their wages. They're working. They're earning wages. They have employment. They still are not making enough to survive. And that falls on the oppression of the employer. Amen. Those who oppress the widow... The fatherless, remember the widow's one, a woman who doesn't have a husband. In that day, like we said last week, in that day, the widow was in the bad shape because the man, when they worked, which is a traditional way things always have been, the man worked, the woman stayed home, and it was hard for a woman to find a job. Harder than it is now, even though it's still some gender issues today. But a woman couldn't really find that much work back then, so when she had no husband, she really was not able to survive. There was no social security. There was no social services at that time. So she was basically up a creek and she was at the mercy of society. Amen. So saying don't oppress them. Don't take advantage of them. Don't take advantage of the fatherless. Those who have no parents. No children who don't have any covering. Don't take advantage of them. And that turn aside the stranger from his right. Take care of everyone. Help society. Help people out there in the streets. Help those who are suffering, even though you do not know. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. And fearing God does not mean being afraid of God. To fear God means to be in awe of God. It means you, you just awestruck. You just in complete submission to his will. That's what fear means. So when the Old Testament says fear God, it does not mean be afraid of God. It means to be in awe of God. It means to be humble and submitted to God and his work. Amen. I'm going to go down to verse 1 of chapter 4. But behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Amen. In light of this verse, Mother Hurley's words, you do right, seem, seem even more appropriate. They seem even more critical. Amen. You do right. For if you don't do right, if you live wickedly, God will uproot you. You will be burned up as if you were in an oven. Amen. Too many now want God to fix their problems. Amen. But he already fixed your problems when he gave you his word. Amen. If you will be sincere and true and loyal to his word, then the answers and the opportunities will begin to open up for you. Amen. And we're closing out not only this lesson, but we're closing out our summer quarter 2007. 
And I would like to thank each of you for watching these videos, amen, for watching them and commenting on them, amen, and let me know that you appreciate them. And it's my prayer as we go into our fall quarter of lessons that God will continue to be with us, that the Spirit will continue to move, amen, as I go through the lessons. I pray that the Spirit will use me to study and to be able to express the lessons to you in a better and a more clear manner than I have in the past lessons. I hope and I pray that these videos are encouraging you to study your Sunday school lessons. Go with me through the lessons. Amen. If you don't have one of our Hagar Sunday school books, contact me and I will get you those. Amen. And if you don't want to purchase them, you don't have the money, it doesn't matter. I don't charge for the literature anyway. I pay for the literature from the church and I freely give it to you. Amen. That's part of the ministry that I have. Amen. So if you want a copy of the Sunday school books so you can follow along week by week and study ahead of time, just contact me and I'll make sure you get that book. Amen. And if you do want to pay for it, I'll let you know the cost. And you can send me that donation if you desire. And as we close out this series of lessons, we find that all the lessons, they were all coming from the prophets of old, telling the people to live right. Amen. That is a lesson for all of us, even in our day, to live right. <laughs> do what is right. Help everybody. Amen. Not just some people, but everybody. Love everybody. Those who are in deplorable conditions. Those who are suffering in our country. Those who are suffering in other countries. Amen. Those are our brothers. Those are our sisters. That's the way we have to look at things. Amen. God loves everybody. So if we want to be more like God, we too have to love everybody. That's why Jesus said a new commandment uh, I give unto you. That, we, that you love one another as I have loved you. Are you ready, saints? So many are praying. I wish God would come through. Woo! Are you ready for God to come through? If God were to manifest himself and were to step into your house right now, would you be ready for his coming? Oh, so many of you say you believe in Jesus. If Jesus walked in your house right now, if he walked on your job and listened to your conversations, what would you say? Would you be ready for his coming? We know Christ is in us and hears everything we do, sees everything we do. But if he, if he physically manifested himself to you right now, what would he have to say? If Father Hill, the founder of the Universal Hagar Spiritual Church, manifested himself and walked into your life and saw how you were living, what would he say? He suffered, he sacrificed, he gave his life so that men and women could be free. What would he say if he saw your life and how you were living? What would he say to you? What would Isaiah say? What would Malachi say? What would Zechariah say? What would Hagar say? What would Amos say? Praise his great name. What would they say if they saw your lifestyle? Would they say you're living right? Would they say turn from your evil ways? What would they say to you, amen? That's why the songwriter said, My Lord's getting us ready for that great day. My Lord's getting us ready for that great day. My Lord's getting us ready for that great day. Who shall be able to stand? God is trying to get us ready through his word for that great day. Will you be able to stand? That's a question only you can answer. And you answer it by studying the scripture. By studying his word. Keep coming back to fatherhilda.com. We're going to keep adding features and adding more videos and adding more segments to the ministry to help you to know God's word and to help you become one with him and to help you to get ready for the great day. May peace, joy, happiness, success, and financial prosperity ever abide with you all. Amen.